Right, exactly. Except this time I've seen episodes of season two and I will say congrats. Uh, okay. The first two episodes are, uh, I will give you a big thumbs up. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah, we so, hard on some of the tonal shifts. I hope, I uh, hope that's obvious. Yeah. The thing that I really took away from it is the covenant just looks so much more badass mm. uh, this season in terms of like, they just, you're scared of them in a way you were not scared of in the first season. Yeah, I think the, v the VFX are much improved for one, and then how they're handled and shot, I think, is better too, where they're always at some distance. They're in the fog. They're like just out there. You can't quite see. So that thing of like, you know, the unseen threat, I think, is used quite well in this season. Yeah, the, you can't go wrong with fog and flashlights. That's true. <laughs> you know? So uh, one of the things that I learned on set and Kiki and uh, David confirmed with me just a few minutes ago is episode four is basically like a one -er, but, you know, not all the way a one -er, but, you know, it's a lot of a one -er. So when you when you heard that you were going to be doing something like this, how excited were you or are you like, how are we doing this on a TV show? Yeah, uh, it was probably more of the second one. <laughs> I was, well, it's a combination of both. I was very excited that we were attempting it, but I was uh, confused as to how the logistics would, would pan out. And, you know, not being, um, not being a director or a cameraman, I don't have the, uh, you know, direct knowledge of how that actually works, how the cuts work, how the stitches work. So it was a really great learning opportunity for me, actually. The director, uh, Craig Zisk, was, was very confident in his approach. And, uh, you know, he put a lot of my... Um, a lot of my worries to rest pretty early on by showing me some of the stitched together footage. So we did this one um, really amazing sequence where there's, I think there's probably three or four sort of long one or shots that, that are used in different times in the episode. And there's a great sequence where there's a fight with uh, an, an unknown foe and uh, it's done in this one -er. And to do a fight, which is a, a close quarters combat fight uh, with a member of the Covenant, who's obviously not going to be there fighting with me, it's going to be stunt people, um, we had to really use these stitches, the technology of the stitching the shots together well. And I was so impressed by how they were able to put the stitches together immediately so we had one day of shooting where we did basically the whole sequence of this fight and they were able to show me the whole fight basically by the end of the night and that kind of set the tone for me where I, I could see where it was heading and what they were intending and a lot of my worries were were eased oh with the tv production schedule how early on did you start training for that episode or was it just like i mean like if you don't mind like pull back the curtain on what it like what you had to do to prepare for that. Well, the preparation begins months ahead, but it's more general physical preparation. I work with my trainer, Eddie Rayburn, who's uh, kind of invaluable to me. And uh, at my age, keeping myself uh, where I need to be for this season, we put a few months of prep into putting on uh, a bunch of muscle because I'm a naturally more thin build. Um, and then also kind of keeping it, loose and limber and doing enough uh, mobility stuff where I'm able to do these kind of fast uh, close quarter combat fights and not look kind of slow and plodding with the amount of muscle that I put on. So that work begins months ahead. Then we get there um, a few weeks ahead from, from beginning to shoot. And I start working with the stunt team and uh, I get in there and I start doing general combat training, some boxing, some rolling on the mats with jujitsu. And we start to learn some basic choreography, but the actual choreography for the fights doesn't come to me until about a week or two before we shoot. And then it's just like really hammering down, being in there every day, memorizing the choreography, that sequence I was talking about with the close quarters combat fight, we would shoot um, versions with the stunt uh, double who I was fighting. Uh, and then they'd pull them out and we do the same little short sequence with me fighting the air. And those right. were the takes that we ended up using was me fighting air. So then the visual effects go over that shot. Um, so it was a really technical process, but in order to be successful at uh, having those shots where I'm fighting the air, um, look good and 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 be ready for the VFX to be entered into. I have to know that 
fight like the back of my hand. And it's hard when you only have like a week or two, you know, uh, on a movie schedule, they get months for prepping for these kind of things. And uh, we, we, we do them quite quickly. That's the reason why I can't wait to see uh, episode four and just to see what you guys, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. very ambitious filmmaking. Yeah, it really is. And, and, and I can assure you, you know, if you liked one and two and felt the new direction that you'll love four, four is uh, it's, it's really a great episode. Um, and it'll take a, an episode or two to kind of recover from that. <laughs> Got it. Um, so now that you've made the first two seasons, uh, what did you, I know you learned a lot making the first season, but what did you actually learn making the second season that if you are fortunate enough to make the third, you're going to take with you? Uh, that material is key. Um, starting with a, with a really good script is the most important thing. So I'll continue to press for that and to advocate for that. Um, there are a number of lessons kind of story-wise that I took away that I, I won't go into because if we're fortunate enough to make future ones, the, that'll be a conversation between me and the people that make those kinds of decisions. And I wouldn't want to uh, involve you guys in that. <laughs> I understand. Has Paramount or anybody involved at the studio level asked you to save any dates in 2024? No, no, but I am under contract until at least April. And so uh, we'll see, you know, you know, what they decide before that. No, I, I completely understand. Um, one of the things, though, is you are away. and You've talked about it, it's a year of your life filming in, I believe, Budapest. Yeah. So have you have you asked them at all? Hey, if we do get to do like a season three and four, is Vancouver an option? Or do you think <laughs> Budapest is like always the place. I haven't. I haven't. I try to I try to stay out of those uh, larger scale uh, decisions as much as possible um, because I just don't know, you know, budget wise what it takes to shoot in one place and what it takes to shoot in another. And I wouldn't even want to. It would just, uh, you know, short circuit my brain to have to think about those kind of logistics. Uh, sure. so leave it to somebody else. For me, you know, I made a commitment to this show uh, early on when I accepted it and and I, I do everything at uh, at 100 percent. So until they tell me we're not making any more, I'm ready to go wherever they want and do whatever is needed to make the best show possible. I like that attitude a lot. Uh, it does feel like after watching the first two episodes, the state of the galaxy in the world of Halo is coming undone by the Covenant. Things are dire for humanity. The humanity is on the ropes. Yeah. Um, the stakes are higher. You know, the, the threat is more real. Uh, the enemy, as they say, is at the gate. And um, in th through the first two episodes, there's a very real chance of risk. And, and it only escalates in three. And by four, uh, you know, the threat is here. And it has to be dealt with. When you think about the sequences and scenes you've done in the first two seasons, which which one do you think ended up being the backbreaker? The one that you're like, how are we doing this? I can't. You know what I mean? It's hard because so much uh, that that question covers so much kind of logistic stuff. So I would say in the first season, both the Madrigal battle that opens the season and sure. the battle in in episode five where uh, the Covenant is it attacks finally um, and comes to get the artifact. Uh, both of those were, were these massive sequences that encompassed about a month each um, and took us a long time and were these huge things to achieve. Um, we worked a lot more efficiently in the second season. So while I think the action feels bigger, it feels more immediate, it feels more intense, and it, it's because of the point of view that it's shot from. It's much more subjective. It's being, it's putting you into the battle with the characters. And, but as, in terms of shooting, we were far, 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 far more efficient. Um, took a lot less time to shoot action uh, and shot it quickly, efficiently, and to, to I think, more spectacular effect. So um, in terms of backbreakers, the, the, two, the two sequences in the first season felt more right. like backbreakers than anything we did in the second season. The second season, uh, the, the sequence that the, these wonders we talked about in four, they felt like a big thing to bite off. Um, but immediately, once I saw how we were doing it, I was it was clear to me they were going to be really effective. And, um, and as I said, efficiency sort of uh, won the day. I just want to say thank you for your time. I really do hope it's a huge hit for you guys and you can make another season. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Nice to see you.